YouTube. My name is Mesa Sean, and we are back here on Destiny 2. Okay, folks, we are going to go over the This Week at Bungie for October 25th. It is jam-packed with a ton of news, and we get a preview at what's coming with update 2.0.5. Let's get into it, folks. Bungie wants you to create an in-game costume, and 10 people will be picked to get this special emblem. So from now until 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on October 31st, use masks, armor, and shaders to create an in-game costume. Once you do that, you want to take a screen Screenshot. From there, you use hashtag Festival of Costumes, and then you want to share that screenshot with the Community Creations page, Twitter, or Instagram. Ten winners will be celebrated via at Bungie over on Twitter on Halloween Day and treated to the unique emblem we reserve for all our best artists. Group shots are welcome, humor encouraged, put on a mask, and go show the bad guys they can't keep us down. Now, next Tuesday, we should be getting the quest to solve the murder of Master Ives. We all believe that will be for the Thunderlord. Uh, I have all the API pictures, icons, everything from that, and we see two ornaments for the Thunderlord. So keep it locked in here. Turn on notifications because I will be streaming the weekly reset next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Also next week on Tuesday at Reset, we are getting update 2.0.5, and this is going to have a lot of quality of life changes. We have a nice preview to go through now, but next week I'll make a full video on all of the changes when the actual update hits. But here's what we have to laundry list right now. First off, we have some general quality of life changes. Banshee 44 will accept up to 25 gunsmith materials at a time. And that's good because it gets a little annoying spamming the button to get him to give you one package. However, he never gives me anything good. They are removing the hold timer for the spider's material exchange interactions. They are increasing the stack size of ghost fragments from 10 to 20, and they're reducing shader dismantle time from one second to 0.25 seconds. Next up is exotic duplicate waiting. And this is a big one for me because I do not have one piece of exotic forsaken armor. So so I hope this works next week. When you're receiving an exotic, we will take into account all exotics you have found and weight them against exotics you have yet to acquire. This will lower the chances of receiving exotics you already own. Exotics that you do not yet own will be individually weighted much higher than duplicate exotics. When receiving duplicate exotics, you will be more likely to earn armor pieces as they have been randomly rolled with perks. Exotic quest weapons are being removed from the exotic Engram loot pool. Sound off in the comment section to make me feel horrible about my RNG. How many pieces of Forsaken exotic armor have you gotten since the release of Forsaken? Next up, we have changes to Masterwork Cores. Now, Masterwork Cores will be renamed Enhancement Cores. More sources will award Enhancement Cores. They will be added to Scrapper Bounties and six of the Spider's weekly bounties. Enhancement Cores will be more visible in the loot feed. So this is a big deal, guys. I know what I will be doing next week because I'm at the point where everything is dropping at 600 right now for me, but I don't have any masterwork cores or enhancement cores to infuse things. So I know next week what I'll be doing, well, I'll be heading over to the spider on all three characters to get those six spider weekly bounties and see how many enhancement cores I can get for my characters. It does not say right here how many cores you get per one of these bounties. We'll find out next week. Next up, we have some exotic tuning. First up, the Wish Ender, increasing the base damage, fixing an issue where the Broadhead perk would not properly activate under certain circumstances, which would result in loss of damage. Last week, I finished the quest for the Wish Ender, and I was gonna do a review on it, but frankly, guys, I was just not feeling it. And I felt like, yeah, it did not have that much damage. So we don't have a percentage of that base damage increase, but I definitely, I'm looking forward to checking this thing out after this update. The Malfeasance is also getting a buff. They are increasing the explosive shadow detonation damage and also increasing damage against Taken and also Invaders. Trace Rifles are also getting some quality of life changes. When you're in the Crucible, you will spawn in with 50 for ammo. They also will benefit from the following armor perks. Auto Rifle Reloader, Unflinching Auto Rifle Aim, Auto Rifle Targeting, 
precision weapon targeting, and auto rifle dexterity. But that's all with regards to exotics and the quality of life changes. I will have a full video up for you guys Tuesday night on everything that comes with update 2.0.5. Next week is going to be a great time to play Gambit because for the first time, we are getting double and triple infamy. Right now, I reset my infamy once, so I got that trust, the fully curated version, and when you reset it the second time, you get the Bad Omens curated version, which I really want because I think it has tracking and cluster bombs. But double infamy is going to start at reset at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard time on October 30th and end on the 2nd. However, then on the 2nd through the 7th, you will get triple infamy. They also say here, keep an eye out. Once update 2.0.5 is live, the Ascendant Primeval Servitor spawn rates will increase. Even though it's not a full curse week, you may find yourself eye to eye with that evil meatball during this event. Good luck in your hunt for the Malfeasance. So next week will be busy for me. Well, actually semi-busy because I have to help my girlfriend move because she's moving into a new apartment. But other than that, I want to grind Gambit, I want to get to uh, Infamy Rank 2, and I want to get the Meatball so I can hopefully get my Malfeasance finally. Bungie is bringing back the Refer a Friend program, and there will be a whole bunch of new rewards that you can get as a veteran player. So veteran players may begin to refer new players to Forsaken via a link on Bungie.net and embark on a refer a friend quest starting October 30th. And let me read you more from Bungie.net. Veterans, it's on you to show your referral the ropes. This quest gives you ample time to get your friend up to speed on everything in Destiny 2. From perk sets to raid loadouts, new players, this is your time to learn what it's like to be a guardian. As you complete steps throughout the quest, both of you, veteran and referral, will earn some sleek rewards to commemorate your camaraderie and we see a picture of a new ship it looks like an exotic ornament for the borealis sniper rifle we've got a new emblem and of course a sparrow they also continue with if you happen to have multiple friends to refer there's more loot to earn veteran players who refer multiple new players in destiny 2 forsaken will receive additional rewards if you're currently wondering if you qualify as a veteran or a new player here are the details a veteran player is any player who owns Destiny 2 Forsaken. Veteran players may invite new players for the Refer a Friend promotion. A new player is any player who does not own Destiny 2 Forsaken or has owned it for less than seven days. Once a player has owned Destiny 2 Forsaken for longer than seven days, they are no longer eligible to be referred to the Refer a Friend program. Once referred, the quest may be completed at any time. That is going to do it for this video, guys. I will link everything from the This Week at Bungie in the description. So that's it, guys. Leave me a hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end to become a legend. And do me a favor, drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Zuck Twitter at Mesa Sean. Check out my stream. Usually and always on YouTube, and that is it. I am out of here like Vladimir.